What's good everyone, you're watching Get Cruise Ship Info and more. In today's latest cruise news update for 25th June, we're going to take a look at a synopsis for Carnival Corporation's business update for the second quarter of 2021. So sit back and enjoy the scenery while you get your daily dose of cruise news. But before we jump right into the video, may I request you to please go ahead and click that subscribe button and also activate all notifications so that you stay updated whenever I drop my next latest cruise news update. Now, without further ado, let's get started. To begin with, let's look at a couple of key highlights from the business update for the second quarter of 2021. The United States generally accepted accounting principles or in other words GAAP net loss of $2.1 billion and an adjusted net loss of $2 billion for the second quarter of 2021 followed by the second quarter of 2021 which ended with 9.3 billion US dollars of cash and short term investments which the company believes is sufficient liquidity to return to full cruise operations. Now customer deposits increased in the second quarter of 2021 as compared to the previous quarter. The cash burn rate for the first half of 2021 was better than forecasted primarily due to the timing of proceeds from ship sales and working capital changes. So for Carnival Corporation, a total of 42 ships from 8 of the company's 9 brands either have resumed or are announced to resume guest cruise operations by the 30th of November 2021, which comes up to over 50% of the company's capacity, with more announcements which are scheduled to be expected in the upcoming weeks. Now what's good is that the booking volumes for all future cruises during the second quarter of 2021 were 45% higher than the booking volumes during the first quarter of 2021. And building on the legacy of environmental, social and governance performance or ESG performance, the company announced its 2030 sustainability goals and 2050 sustainability aspirations, focusing strategically and holistically on enhancing its sustainable business model while reinforcing its commitment to an investment in sustainability solutions. Another key takeaway out of the highlights is that the cumulative advanced bookings for full year of 2022 are ahead of a very strong 2019, despite minimal advertising or marketing that the company did. This is what Carnival Corporation's President and Chief Executive Officer Arnold Donald had to say. We are working aggressively on our part to return our full fleet to operations by next spring. So far, we have announced that 42 ships, representing over half of our capacity, have been scheduled to return to servicing guests by this fiscal year end. We are currently evaluating various deployment options with a focus on maximizing cash flow, while delivering a great guest experience and serving the best interests of public health. More return to service announcements will be coming in the weeks ahead. We can't wait to welcome all our valued guests and crew members back on board. Now, realistically speaking, as of today, we have 27 ships or approximately 35% of capacity have resumed or are announced to resume by the end of the third quarter of 2021. And we also have an additional 15 ships which should accumulate to approximately 20% of capacity which are announced to resume by the end of the fourth quarter of 2021. Now these together would be 42 ships which would be representing over 50% of the entire corporation's capacity. Moving on to an update on the bookings, this is what Arnold Donald added. Despite our minimal advertising spend, we continue to experience an acceleration in booking trends globally including capturing significant Latin demand for our new sailings this summer. This strong demand affirms confidence in our future. In addition, customer deposits grew this past quarter, a significant milestone on our path to resumption. With the aggressive actions we have already taken to optimize our portfolio and reduce capacity, we believe we are well positioned to capitalize on the pent-up demand and to emerge a leaner and more efficient company, reinforcing our global industry leading position. 
So the booking volumes for all future cruises during the second quarter of 2021 were 45% higher than the booking volumes during the first quarter of 2021. Cumulative advanced bookings for full year 2022 are ahead of a very strong 2019 as of the 31st of May 2021. The company highlights that this level of bookings was achieved with minimal advertising and marketing. So total customer deposits as of 31st of May 2021 and February 28th 2021 were at 2.5 billion US dollars and 2.2 billion US dollars respectively. During the quarter, customer deposits on new bookings exceeded the impact of refunds provided. Moving on to liquidity and refinancing, this is what Carnival Corporation's Chief Financial Officer David Bernstein had to say. We ended the second quarter with 9.3 billion US dollars of cash and short-term investments. We believe we have sufficient liquidity to get us back to full operations and continue to be focused on pursuing refinancing opportunities to reduce interest rates and extend maturities. To date, through our refinancing efforts, we have reduced our future annual interest expense by over $120 million per year and expect to increase our near-term liquidity by $1 billion. Arnold Donald added to this by saying, that once we return to full operations, our cash flow will be the primary driver of the company's return to investment great credit over time, creating greater shareholder value. The company's monthly average cash burn rate for the first half of 2021 was at $500 million, which was better than the forecasted primarily due to the timing of proceeds from ship sales and working capital changes. This monthly average cash burn rate includes revenues earned on voyages, ongoing ship operating and administrative expenses, restart spend, working capital changes which exclude changes in customer deposits, interest expense and capital expenditures, and excludes scheduled debt maturities as well as other cash collaterals which are to be provided. Now, as the company continues to resume guest cruise operations, it expects to incur incremental spend relating to bringing ships out of pause status, returning crew members to its ships and implementing enhanced health and safety protocols. And lastly, why Carnival Corporation went ahead and lowered its capacity growth to make sure that it rebalances its fleet. So this is what Arnold Donald had to share on this. Our strategic decision to accelerate the exit of 19 ships has lowered our capacity growth to roughly 2.5% compounded annually from 2019 through 2025. That's down from 4.5% pre-COVID. Moreover, we have opportunistically rebalanced our portfolio through the ship exits as well as the ship transfer and the modification to our new build schedule. The combination of which will transfer 8,000 berths from our continental European brands to America's favorite cruise line, Carnival Cruise Line, to optimize the current environment, maximize cash generation, and improve our return on invested capital. Now, this does come shortly after on Wednesday when Carnival announced that IDA's 2023 new build and the Costa Magica would be transferred to the Carnival Cruise Line brand. While overall fleet capacity growth is constrained, we will benefit from an exciting roster of new ships spread across our brands to capitalize on the pent-up demand and drive even more enthusiasm, excitement and demand around our restart plan. Nearly every brand will soon have a new ship welcoming guests for the first time beginning with our namesake brand Carnival, introducing the new Mardi Gras. And with that, we conclude our latest cruise news updates for 25th June. If you enjoyed watching this video, a subscribe for my channel and a thumbs up for my video will help my channel in a huge way. Please do leave your comments down below. And yes, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, you take care and stay safe.